Loot Memorex. We'll never tell. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Entrepreneur Mindset. Um, I'm Simon and I'm happy to be here today with my co-host Robert, uh, where we're going to be talking about the things that hold back most entrepreneurs and how we can uh, how we can move past those and overcome those challenges. Uh, today's topic is uh, power of vision. Yeah, vision. So many people say, "Oh, vision statements, mission statements. Those are those are corny things that big companies do." Well, today's conversation is going to be all about how how much more wrong that couldn't be. How's that for double negative? Nice. <laughs> so, um, hopefully, we'll get uh, get some folks in here. We'll get to start chatting. Um, while we're talking here, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, Facebook Live where you shared this, Robert, so that I can uh, respond if we get anybody in there. Um, and I also have to remember where I put it. <laughs> there it is. All right. Yeah, for me, I think one of the things that obviously people get easily confused between a mission and vision and, and I like to think of the, uh, from a military perspective, the, the vision is, is the longer term, right? The, the war that you, you want to win and the mission becomes each individual battle in the, in the process. And so missions can typically be shorter term or, or, you know, specifically focused to one project or, or one thing, whereas a vision is the longer term destination. Um, that you're trying to go for either individually or as a company. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I, I think it makes even more sense when you consider it from the standpoint of uh, Stephen Covey, begin with the end in mind. Having that, that roadmap, that, um, well, battle plan, to use your, your analogy, you know, that that's, that's how we know whether the decisions that we're making are going to be taking us closer to our ultimate vision or ultimate desired destination or farther away from it. Right. So, you know, I like the, I like the concept of seeing it as, as a, a I don't it's, know how you, how you put, how you would put that. It's not, it's not a battle plan because a battle plan would be for the mission. Right. Right. Well, it's the it's the longer term destination, right? What is what is the point of the battle, right? That that battle is necessary because it leads us towards towards our ultimate victory, which is obviously hopefully the goal in in that situation. But another way to think about it, I think, is uh, you know the, our GPS on our phone can give us turn by turn directions, um, but it's also pretty amazing in that it can show us a street view of the destination. And, and I think vision is more like the street view of the destination and the plan is the GPS instructions that are turn by turn. Um, and a lot of times in business, we get caught up in, in the turn by turn, daily productivity, daily stay busy, daily get all this, and we lose sight of that destination. Um, and, and having that destination, holding that destination in our minds might be more important than knowing the details of of each turn. Um, and that's challenging for a lot of people who've been spent their whole lives being turn by turn instructed, right. And memorize yeah. the turns, memorize, memorize all these things so that you can pass a test. Um, but don't, don't worry about the destination. Um, I like what you and I talked about earlier. Would you be willing to share that about, uh, uh, uh in getting jobs by default or, Choosing oh. a career by default. Yes. Well, um, one of the things that I'm passionate about is uh, education and the state of the our current education system. Uh, I, I find appalling, uh, largely because it prepares people for uh, to be a part of a workforce, not how to live a life, right? Not how to have a deeply fulfilling life. And um, so many people, when they go through that education system, they come out into the world bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and their first thought is, you know, they just moved out of the house. They're out on their own for the first time. 
got to make money. So where do they choose deliberately to go and make money? <laughs> they don't. Right? It becomes a, a, a decision by default. Whoever comes along with a job offer or the first job that they apply for that they says that says that they'll hire them, they jump on board with that. And that one little lack of deliberation can literally change the chart of, a, of an entire human life. Right? You can you can come out of, of high school and you can't find a job and suddenly someone's like, yeah, I'll, I'll hire you to to come be a, a, a sales intern in my office. Well, this person may never have had any kind of thought whatsoever about being in sales, but now they're going to have, you know, they're going to go do this job. They're going to, you know, be there for six months, a year, two years, however long before they start looking for something else. And now they're going to have the experience of being a salesman. And so they go and obviously that's what they know now. So they go and do that again and they do it again. And so you end up going, having an entire career making decisions by default because that just happened to be where you started. So many people just don't take the time to say, am I doing something that when I go home at the end of the day deeply fulfills me? And when I get up in the morning, am I excited to go and do it again? Or they, uh, or they give up on that too easily, right? Like, yeah. obviously, when we're younger and, and we're in kids, like, you know, the dream of being an astronaut or, or a fireman or, or uh, you know, some dreamy thing. I suppose some kids dream of being computer programmers, um, you know, but uh, when, they, <clears throat> when they come out of school and, then the, and their first, the first job opportunity, like you said, is, is car sales or whatever sales, whoever just hires them. And then, and then they lose sight of the dream. Like, well, maybe, maybe I'm not, I'm not worthy. I can't get it. Or rather than letting the dream guide their decision-making and, and holding fast to the vision of the dream, holding fast to, to that destination and allowing that to guide their, guide their turn by turn choices. Right. Like even if they accept that job for the sake of cash, they recognize this is temporary and I'm only doing this for the sake of getting to the next step of education or whatever piece is necessary to get to where I want to go. Um, and being very, like you said, being intentional. Um, but I think once you start down that default path, it's too easy to let go of the dream. It's too easy to let go of, of the, the things that you, like you said, the heart, right? The things that are driving you and motivating you. And it simply becomes, I'm working for a paycheck. And, 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 and I, I'm afraid there's a lot of people like I bet 90% of people end up in jobs. They end up, maybe they're really good at them. Maybe they're, but you're right there. There's no personal satisfaction in that. They're just working a job to get a paycheck to support their family, which is obviously a good thing, but it could be so much better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the problem with chasing checks is too <laughs> chasing checks is problem with chasing checks too is that you get caught in this trap, the, the mindset trap that It can't be better. This is this is my lot. This is this is good enough, you know. Um, attenuation. You know uh, how like a wave will attenuate over time. Right. Well, and then and worse than that is that your your view of money becomes becomes jaded because because money becomes the object that you're working for rather than a tool that you're using in your work. And, and I think so many people get caught up in just working for money rather than recognizing that, that money is a tool and it can be used to bring about so many other things. Um, but you get caught up in working for the money, spending the money to pay your bills, and, and that, that's the cycle of life um, that many people get stuck in. Yeah, that employee mindset. You don't need to be there. It's it's uh, it's it's a false, like you said, it's life by default. But but you, at any point, you can choose that. I no longer want to live by default. I want to live intentionally, and uh, and I think you know the first step in that is is having a vision of of what you want to be, do, or have 
in in the future. Yeah, without question, that's that is in itself the entire process of no longer living by default by making that choice the first question that comes up well if i'm not going to live by default anymore what am i going to do right and so having a vision which you know i think having a vision the phrase um, gets a bad rap because so many uh you know big companies have their employees come in for orientation and they sit down and go over the mission the, the the mission and vision statements and you know to to be the best and most productive company that does widget sales in north america you know, says nothing about you know the motivation or, in, or inspiration behind the company uh, but so so often people get that's what they they get presented with as as far as vision anyway i tangented there so yes having that vision creating something that says, well, I'm no longer just going to meander with the currents. I'm going to actually hoist a sail. Well, once I hoist that sail, I'm in motion. Where do I want to end up? And that is the power of vision. It gives you the ability to make educated decisions on, at every possible tack, which direction you need to be going. Absolutely. Well, and I, and I think so many people, um, Obviously, the money mindset is a big piece and a big thing for people to challenge because once, once you're working for a paycheck and and the idea that that money is limited is so simple to to get picked up on and and the idea that that this is all I can get right. So today I'm working for you know twenty dollars an hour and and twenty dollars an hour is all I can get. And even if they start to visualize a future. They visualize a future where they get a two dollar raise, right? And it's twenty two dollars. It's a little more and a little better, right? A yeah. little more and a little better, and that's and that's what so many people are are content with, rather than the idea that there's this big dream and oh wait, it's not twenty two dollars an hour. It's twenty twenty thousand a year, <laughs> you know, right? Twenty two hundred exactly. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a dream that seems so out of touch with reality for them that they that they find it hard to believe so yeah. so what's the what's the best way for somebody to to think about who they want to be and what they want to do and even what they want to have what 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 do you think is a is a the best areas to to think about your future and and, and having a vision for so, a different future so actually um you mind if I pull up a slide here? Of course not. Let's see if this, uh, see, I'm not sure if this is going to show up on the Facebook Live or not, but we'll give this a shot. Um, so yes, I, I have a um, worksheet that I like to use. Oh, and it even puts us over on the side. That's great. So I call this the Five Domains of Life Worksheet. And these five areas cover every possible domain of life. Um, what, what would you consider a domain? What, what is, can you explain? A domain, area, everything that you can think of. If you, if you thought about, hey, I wish that this part of my life were better, it will fit under one of these five domains. It's, it's consider, consider them to be the umbrellas under which life takes place. Right. So you have health, which, of course, has to do with with the physical health of the body, but also the emotional, intellectual health of the mind. Wealth, which is about living a rich, full life. It's not just about how much money do you got. Right. It's also it's how much money do you make, but also how fulfilling do you feel at the end of the day? How excited are you to go to the to your job the next day? What's the nature of your relationships and, and how do they fulfill you? Of course, relationships is also one of the domains, but they, you know, they kind of overlap a little bit. Spirituality, um, you know, it, those people who are watching or, or seeing this later, um, it doesn't matter whether you're uh, in touch with, you know, you know, your God, the Father, you know, however you see your religion, or if you are uh, somebody who doesn't necessarily in, invest in that kind of uh, philosophy, but is are more 
about a uh, psychological spirituality and anywhere in the spectrum. It's about how do you relate to the, the divinity of the universe, right? And, and how do you carry on that, that relationship? And then the last domain is giving. And giving, of course, is uh, putting back into the world. How do you contribute in the world? And so we go through these five areas, and there are, I don't want to, I don't want to take us too far into the weeds, um, but there's six core human needs, and those core human needs are um, certainty, you know, how, how secure, how safe, uh, how, how confident are we that today our life is going to be what it was yesterday, and then uncertainty, uh, because uh, as um, someone someone who once reviewed these once said, uh, because God has a sense of humor, <laughs> certainty and uncertainty. Certainty would be how how much do we like to have thrill and adventure, right? Because a life without it is pretty dull. And you know, I'm just, and rather than try and like teach this, I'm, I don't want to. Like I said, I don't want to get us too far in the weeds, but I'm going to just show this. Can I can I jump in real quick with a just a, a personal personal comment for me? One of the things that was helpful for me to understand the domain of wealth um, was thinking about wealth not only in terms of money but in terms of freedom of time and money. And oh, without question, great one, love it. And so that that was a that was a real eye opener for me that because wealth is hard for some people to. To, to identify with um, and then but but most of us recognize how much time we have and, and how much money we have and so having freedom of time and money is is it it just helps make those decisions answer those questions a little better in that in that domain yeah absolutely I like that and I am going to steal that for future presentations of this material so what you would do, this this is a, a like a wheel of life kind of exercise where you rate yourself on uh, from zero to ten in each of the domains, and it ends up looking, you know, yours will obviously be different, but it gives you a, a rough idea of where you are, how much surface area your your satisfaction in the different domains of your life are. And then you can simply say, well, which one's the lowest or which one do I really want to work on the most? And then you can start goal setting in that area of your life. For example, this example, um, the lowest number that we would have here is in giving and in relationships. Looks like relationships might actually be a little bit lower. So this person might actually say, all right, so for the next six months, I'm going to focus on learning some relationship skills. And over the course of time, they might come back and revisit this and realize that their relationships are now up at a six or a seven and they've increased that the area covered by the, the gray parallelogram there. So it's kind of a way of, of keeping an eye on, on where your growth is helping you have a better life. And so real quickly, the, the, this exercise, if anybody wants to, to do this, feel free to copy it off of this screen or uh, even drop a comment below this video and I'll be happy to share the link. So you go through and you answer questions. How does my need for each of the core human needs, which are certainty, uncertainty, significance, connectedness, growth, and contribution. And then you take those six needs and you apply them to your health. You know, what two or three areas in my health, what two or three needs do I get satisfied by being in the, the health that I am? What two or three needs do I get uh most satisfied in the area of wealth and or financial and time freedom and things like that. And then you go through each of the five domains and you answer those up to six questions on each one. Sometimes it won't, um, something won't apply to you. But when you do, when you go through that exercise, you take what you've written and you fill out this last page, you set yourself a, um, a date in the future to become the person that you want to be. Like we might choose today's September 8th. And so we, we would fill this page out. Today is September 8th, 2025. And I am so happy and grateful that. And then you write 
a paragraph or three or five that addresses all the things that you just learned in this exercise by describing what your perfect day is like in each of the five domains. And that exercise will give you, even if you don't necessarily know what your like one great purpose is in life, right? This will give you an idea of how to start living a better life, a more fulfilling life based on what is most important to you and where you are. Well, I think that's uh that it's going to start to reveal itself as as you start to to apply these choices, right? Make choices based on those five domains. Um, I I would encourage anyone that does this, right? Like you you mentioned it subtly, but you know, pick one that you're going to work on for for six months. You know, maybe two at the most. Obviously, yeah. it's hard to make changes in all five domains at the same time. Unless you were in a car accident or or some severe trauma happened that 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 forces you to make changes in all five domains, um, it's really hard. But pick one or two and 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 use that as your as your focus point. You know, a lot of people can do health, um, and then once their once their health comes around in a in a four or five six month period, then then that's a great time to say, all right, how can I maintain my health? And then and then focus my energy in another domain, um, and and that's a a great exercise of of growth. But the cool thing is that as you start to make your choices that way, um, it it is kind of cyclical, and it starts to reveal. I think of it if you thought of that picture, the the wheel of life in three D, and and it was a cone rising up to this to this point where all five of those. You know, where your desire, your wishes, your um, purpose in each of those five domains comes up to this point. It's your overall, that's your overall guiding purpose, I think. And and as you start working in each of those domains, that's kind of what starts to happen. It takes on this 3D image and you'll start to realize who you really want to be and, and what it is that you really want to do in the world, um, how you want to have a bigger impact. Absolutely. I think uh, I really like the way that you visualize it like that in a cone, uh, because that also equates to the Maslow Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And if you can imagine that if you've gotten all uh, all of your domains up to where you're all like you've got all five of them up at a nine and a half or a ten, if you can imagine the the very tip of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is self actualization. If you've gotten your five domains of life up to a nine and a half of, or a 10. Can you imagine that you do not feel self-actualized? Yeah, exactly. It, it, I mean, obviously it, it would be feeling good, but, but you'd be having such a big impact in the world. Um, I think the, the reality is that all of our purposes in one way or another have to do with helping and serving humanity. And, and uh, somebody can try to, argue with me or convince me otherwise but the truth is that we feel the most fulfilled when when we're serving and helping other people and i think uh i think as you start to to grow that personal growth really involves you know where am i best equipped to, to serve and help other people what is it that i'm best equipped to provide them with um, and as you start to provide those services and you really start to get into your wheelhouse of of helping others including like your own family right like relationships your your own the reason your health matters is because you've got to be healthy to, to be able to serve others and to give to others um, but relationships and, and family relationships are just as important as as your work and business life and and when all of those start to to be aligned um, it, it it's got to feel you know really really good like as, as each of those starts to grow on the circle. But as I think it's really a maturity thing, as you start to go, that cone starts to take shape. Um, you're, you're not only, you know, like it's one thing to start giving, right? Like giving to the guy on the street corner or, but when giving just becomes a natural outpouring of, of your heart. And, and of course, when you're, freedom of time and money is at a point where you can give away whatever you want to give away because money is just a tool that you're using for for growing your business growing yourself then 
then giving just becomes a part of who you are. <laughs> and it becomes a part of your character um, rather than something that you just do. And I think that's a big piece of, of this. And one of the things that, that really helped me in, in holding my vision was starting to think about how do I feel when I'm doing that, right? So when you answer those questions about who is it that you want, you know, what is it that you want to be, do, or have in each domain? But, but how do I feel if, if I already have that identity, if I'm, you know, if I'm making a quarter of a million dollars a year, how does it feel to be giving away $250,000, right? I mean, how does it feel to, to give away, you know, a piece, the, the piece of that? And, and then how does it feel to, to, to have relationships that are valuable and that you know that you're giving as much value. In fact, you're giving more value than you're taking from your relationships, right? So how does that person feel? And being able to write down how they feel in that future, in that, that statement, right? You're made on September 9th, yes. 2020. I am grateful that I feel boom, boom, boom. That just is so much more impactful in, recognizing who you're going to be right and so i really like making people i i kind of wanted to create my own word um because we have you know realize is 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 recognizing um reality right and then visualize is is like visualizing the future and so i decided feelize we need to be able to feelize so it's our future feeling <laughs> so i made up a new That's word an amazingly good um beneficial skill is to be able to feel in the future and to feel in the past. Um, it's not really a, a part of today's topic, but uh, I think you'll agree. And since we just mentioned it on the, the worksheet, um, gratitude is the act of putting yourself into a feeling state about something that it could happen in the future or has happened in the past. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody who has ever made it into a, as a successful entrepreneur, who has not embraced gratitude. And it's a, it's a, a skill that the better you get at it, the better you get at feelizing, the better you will get at expressing gratitude because you have to, you can say, um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful that, um, I'm not going to say I'm grateful for the weather. <laughs> Uh, so I'm wearing my Hawaiian flowery shirt today. Did you, do you like the threads? Um, this is this is in honor of the fact that yesterday it was 95 degrees here in Colorado, and today it is 35 degrees. Um, so, and trying to snow. So, um, but uh, this is a good exercise. I am, I am, I am grateful that the um, parched feeling in the air is going away. I'm grateful for the precipitation, for taking all of the ash from the Colorado wildfires and getting it out of our atmosphere. And I'm grateful for the precipitation to help arrest the fires that are going on in Northern Colorado, because it's really scary how much is burning. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, I think gratefulness is even more powerful than, than we give it credit for. I think, so we talked about that, that, uh, Maslow's hierarchy and getting up to self-actualization, right? And so we talked about this cone we created now on our five domains. Well, self-actualization is actually a higher, each of those in my mind is a higher level of vibration, right? Sure. Our brain is, our brain, our body, everything is vibrating, right? Um, we know that about all of matter, right? Is that a different, every piece of matter is at a different level of vibration. So, you know, the table sitting in front of you is vibrating although it's vibrating very, very slowly, but our brain also vibrates. And I think when we're at these lower, the lower level, our brain vibrates much, much differently, right? I think living life by default, your brain is vibrating at a, at a lower level where gratitude comes in, no matter what level your brain is vibrating at, if you start expressing gratitude, start expressing daily, that vibration takes you to a level that you haven't been to before. So no matter where you are in that cone, no matter where you are in that pathway towards self-actualization, gratitude will take you to another level. And daily gratitude will just start to move you up the 
the hierarchy on a daily basis. And and I think that's part of that growth process. But the the vibration piece is so exciting because when you start to feelize the future, right, you start to have feelings in the future. Now, most of us grow up thinking that our memory is one way, right? We're taught to believe that that we can just remember the past. And we we when we're thinking about our memory, we're thinking about all these past things that we've remembered, right? Past events, past, you know, studies, past books we've read, all the things. But the truth is our memory can also be programmed with the future. And and that's part of what we're trying to do with this vision is plant the seeds of a memory in the future. And and the more we visualize that, the more we we see that destination that we're headed towards, the more our brain, our subconscious brain, the part that's operating all the time below the surface, picks up that vision and uses it for our decision making. And and so we want to program our memory with the future that we want rather than the past that we feel stuck with. <laughs> right. Uh, and so uh, the gratitude is what less that up. Gratitude is what can help amplify it. Right. It's like a multiplier. Um, and so, so powerful. <laughs> and planting those seeds of the future with gratitude, whew, powerful, super powerful. Now you're getting into, into some some uh, Napoleon Hill stuff. Absolutely. James Allen. Well, James Allen, Napoleon Hill, Wallace D. Waddles, all of them said the same same thing over and over and over again. Um, yeah, I really, I, as a Man Thinketh was seminal for me. It was it was. The analogy in As a Man Thinketh, where he starts talking about the, uh, the uh, a man's mind is like a garden, and whether he neglects his mind or cultivate cultivates it carefully, whatever seed falls within will grow that plant. Absolutely. Obviously, I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it memorized, but that concept was huge for me when I started, because I, I, I actually read that book when I was just beginning my exercises on learning about gratitude and learning about the reticular activation system, which is that subconscious part of the mind that um, that you were talking about. Um, I'm actually really fascinated by the RAS. I would, we'll have to do a, a, a show about it someday because absolutely. It's, so think about it's just amazing. Go ahead. Think, think about the life of default, right? What happens to a garden in default? Weeds. Absolutely. Right. So it's a great illustration, right? Yeah. If you're if you're a visual person, what what's incredible, like I just read Second Corinthians today in, in scripture, and it basically is the same thing. If you if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If you sow generously, right? And that's the idea, right? If we go through our garden and we put one little seed here, one little seed here, one little seed here, but if you sow generously, you just poof, you fill that garden with the seeds and and, and then you reap. I mean, obviously that's where the, the phrase you reap what you sow is, you know, is a biblical term. But but the truth is if you're choosing a life by default, you're allowing the weeds to take over the garden. And so many times when we're in default that that the weeds have taken over the garden and, and of course because we're in the garden, we don't recognize it, we don't realize it. And and then we start to believe that that's normal, right? That that's all there is. There is no, there is no other option beyond this garden, right? There is, this is, this is what I'm stuck with, right? And then you see other people's success and, and it makes it even worse because you're like, oh, they were in the right place at the right time or oh, they got lucky. They got the lucky break. And, and, and that those statements are so common that all of us have heard them. All of us have probably said them at one point or another. But the sad thing about those statements is that they move you back down the <laughs> down the hierarchy because they're the opposite of gratitude. They're they're negative, and and the impact they have is is on our own heart and our our own mind and our own thinking it takes us a step backwards and lowers us down away from self actualization rather than towards it. Um, Which leads to. Something that you kind of alluded to earlier in this conversation, um, when people are making those choices about whether they're going to live a life by default or maybe they don't even make the choice, they just do. When someone is starting to realize that maybe they can make those decisions, um, 
and they start raising their vibration, one of the big thing to watch big things to watch out for is sadly the dream stealers the the people in our lives who have also bought into the life by default and says uh yeah that would be nice you know talking about you know hey i'd love to learn how to you know be an investor or be a, an entrepreneur that'd be nice but you know it's not secure or like like um like brown crabs. You ever heard about brown crabs? I I don't think so. Not you, you crabbing, and and I I don't know. This is a story that I've heard many times through uh, entrepreneurship and personal development, but I don't know the uh, the actual uh, science behind it. Whether it's all crabs or just the species of brown crabs. But here here's the story. You can go crabbing with a big water bucket and an empty pail. And if you catch one crab, you have to keep pushing it back into the into the bucket because it will climb out. But as soon as you catch a second crab, you can leave them unattended. You can have a bucket full of 20 or 30 of these brown crabs because whichever crab is getting closest to the top, all of his peers will pull them back down. Well, and many times, many times our family's doing it uh, to protect us, right? Like, sure. you, you never, don't dream too big because we don't we don't want them to get hurt. Or, yeah, but you mentioned security, right? Like, this uh, we've had this idea that that loyalty to a company provides a higher level of security, which hasn't that been really, true for thirty years, <laughs> right? It hasn't been true since the eighties, right? Since since CEOs started getting compensated at a different level layoffs layoffs have become a regular norm and there is no loyalty um at least on the company side and and if an employee is loyal to the company he's he's fooling himself to think that they can't let him go tomorrow yeah. right and obviously covid was a huge wake up call for a bunch of people that thought they had job security they had this this secure job and nothing was going to go wrong and you know well, one day to the next, our country goes from wide open to shut down, and some industries have had to let people go and and certainly cut salaries and cut jobs. And um, I think the the real security is in knowing your potential and knowing you're capable of Perfect. accomplishing almost anything. And so, even if your industry that you're in gets shut down today, you could pivot tomorrow and start something else. And, and that's the exciting thing about entrepreneurship is that even if you're in an industry, a brick and mortar store that boom, doors got closed, I can pivot and figure out how to do something else on the internet. And there's always, there's always a different option if you have the freedom to make your own choices as an entrepreneur. And sure, sometimes there's some money involved, there's some risk involved, um, but, but the truth is your, your potential is so much greater than it ever will be in a in a nine to five, you know, paycheck world with health insurance. Absolutely. As as I have been, so that that's my passion is helping people see the see entrepreneurship as a way out of the rat race. And as as I developed my philosophy around that, um, one of the things that I started to visualize or maybe feelize <laughs> was that when you when someone is in a situation where they're in a, a position that they think is stable and then it's it's ripped out from underneath them it's not just the lack of stability in their in their finances that gets hit, takes a hit it's their self-confidence, it's their belief in themselves, and things like that. And anybody who's ever been laid off, like you were saying, anybody who's ever been laid off knows this, right? It's not just about, oops, time to get another job, right? There's a sense of betrayal. Um, sometimes there's indignation, and there's just a lot of pain wrapped up around in that to the point that I'm willing to say that the idea that working a job over starting your own business is one of the 
great lies that we the people perpetuate on ourselves. It's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, that there's no, con there's no conspiracy to keep the common man down or any of those kind of things, but simply because we want to do well by our others, by our families and our friends and whatnot, we want to help protect people from pain, right? It comes, comes back to that, that sense of generosity. It's, it's part of the human spirit to protect each other. We're a, a tribe animal. And so we, we do this with the best meaning, and we, we hold our fellow man down. We pull them back into the bucket by saying, eh, maybe you should dream smaller, you know? Whereas... Well, or, yeah, dream smaller. Like, I guess I think about the kids wanting to play professional sports, right? And... and and he goes through little league and, and junior league and, and, you know, shows some talent, but at, at some point somebody's going to say, you know, well, maybe you shouldn't shoot for so high. Maybe you should, you know, go for college sports or maybe, you know, maybe playing high school ball, that, that should be good enough. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> so the challenge is that what what's the loss if they try to play at the very highest level and the very best level, right? And and they don't quite make it. What's what's there versus you know giving up the dream before it even you know even gets started because well you can't get to where you want to go so go halfway, right? Yeah, but you know you aim for the stars. You might hit the moon. Exactly. Right. But then so many people give up and say, well. I'm not even sure we can get to the moon, right? And so maybe we shouldn't even maybe we shouldn't even build a rocket. And yeah, no, I I would like to see a revolution in this country where the uh, the working mindset is related. I would like to see a world where school educates people on how to, how to work, how to be responsible, how, you know, fiscal, even comprehension, much less acuity, right? And then from the, from the high school or collegiate level, people would go into the, the workforce and contribute to the, the workforce for 5, 10, 20 years, and then leave the workforce to start their own business. And I would like that to be something that everyone sees as the norm, right? That, you know, sure, there might be somebody who's like, I, I, I rather like where I am and what I'm doing. I don't think I'm going to go to the graduate to entrepreneurship. But right now we have this schooling and working and retiring mindset. Yeah. And, and when people retire, very often they go stir crazy. But what if instead it was go to school work, and then build something that you're passionate about that will last you until you're pretty much done here. And I wish, I wish we'd do it even, even different, right? Like, so obviously school is really focused on memorizing stuff and, and, and being able to regurgitate, you know, whatever history, math, science, and almost all of it is, you know, memorize this book and, and then regurgitate for the test versus project management, project accomplishment. Um, it, so there's just so much opportunity for our school system to, to be more focused on raising the potential for people. And even if you focused in, in each of the five domains we talked about earlier, it would be a great opportunity for, for, for people to, to see how a vision can be accomplished, right? Like I want to, build this bridge right and it, and it becomes a project management piece the vision is the the destination and then how do you bring all the pieces about is so much more powerful in a teaching tool um, than than what our current system is and and of course covid would be a great opportunity for that to change and sorry seth Godin, i kind of stole that from your blog today but <laughs> that 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 idea of changing the system to, to, to change the vision, right? To, to equip people to, 
be able to have vision to, to equip people to to believe more in themselves and their potential would be so much more powerful in in school than than what we're what we're currently providing. Um, we created the the modern educational process was created in the late 19th century in order to create a compliant workforce right well, they, well even stable workforce i recognize the industrial age needed yeah. needed employees and, and we don't need that that <laughs> level today exactly we, we need we need something that that teaches people that, that life is so much bigger than what it could be, than what you see it. It, it could be they, so much more. They are so much bigger, right? That's the, that's the piece, yeah. right? That unlimited human potential inside each one of us. And, and I think of some of the, the conflict now coming out of, you know, or just being revealed through, through COVID, right? Through the stresses and, and strain that our country is going through right now i think some of the solution to that is helping people see their potential and potential for relationships potential for for better um opportunities right so i I think you know right now we have some social economic classes that feel powerless they feel um held back or pressed and unheard and unheard and and certainly those things are true on the on the maybe the government level and the media level and, and even opportunity level. But the truth is they have the same human potential uh, as, as people that have found great success. And Absolutely. and how powerful would it be to help some of those folks in different socioeconomic levels unlock that potential and and start to believe in themselves and be empowered from the inside out rather than rather than expecting our culture, our government, our, our, our whatever company to power them, that, that they were self-actualized, that they were self-powered and, 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 and released from the inside out. I, I just, I just think that obviously there's huge potential there because each one of us is made exactly the same and, and doesn't matter what, what race, what color, what, part of the world you were born in or or what part of the country you're brought up in that potential exists in every one of us um and yeah and so seeing seeing a place where that could be um and and that could be empowered and and put to use uh, you know i just i i it would be shocking to see what (laughs) what could happen and yet so exciting because i think it, it it would be so much it'd be a completely different conversation than the conversations that are happening right now. Entirely. The, uh, when, when you look at, I'm just gonna, I'm going to say America, um, because I don't, I don't see a lot of the same kind of social problems elsewhere in the world that we're having right now. I mean, I know everyone one has their, their own. Um, but just speaking about these kind of things that we're discussing right now, the, the BLM movement, the, uh, just all of these disenfranchised groups, right? And the, the, the you know, situations where uh, the police are, you know, for whatever reason, in, in the heat of the moment, they're, they're using deadly force in situations that don't require deadly force. The people who, the, the victims of those situations, or the, the recipients, I'm not, even gonna, I'm not passing judgment, but the, the people who are on the other side of that situation, regardless of race, creed, color, sexual orientation, doesn't matter. The police are the people who make and enforce the laws. Obviously, I know police don't make the laws, but that's a lot of the common perception. So, so these people feel like they have absolutely nowhere to seek recourse, right? And I can't imagine that it's any different in like the Black Lives Matter, right? Sure, I mean, I can stand here as a privileged white guy and tell you white lives matter too, or all lives matter, but the bottom line is, is I'm not disenfranchised. We are have- disempowered. Right? See, yeah. that's, I think that's the piece, right? It, 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 and that's part of why I think because it's politicized and because it's, um, 
you know, obviously it's front page in the media. It's become, it's become about power. And, and I wish the conversation could be about potential because, because if we could talk about potential, potential is where we're all equal. Obviously, you know, if somebody's had medical issues or, or, or other issues that, that changes the conversation, but for the most part, no matter where you're born, no matter, matter what part of the country or you know how you were raised you still have the same potential and if we can help people recognize that potential and empower them to have a vision for a different future that they can have a role in bringing about yes. so so that's the challenge right how do we how do we change the conversation so it's not about power it's about vision and potential to to bring that vision to fruition um, and, and the problem is they have a great vision, right? A vision where, where everybody is treated the same, no matter where they've come from or no matter where they were born or how they were raised, they're treated the same. And, and the challenge is that, that the conversation becomes about power and a power struggle is never, it never leads to vision, right? If, if you've used Wallace Wall D. Waddle's language, it's, it's, it's the competitive competitive mindset versus the creative mindset. And we were created to have a creative mind and our creative minds are being shut off because of this power struggle and this competition between one group and another. That's and I think Simon Sinek, you know, it's the infinite game, right? That's where I'm about to go. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. You say, it. yeah, you, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> you know, basically Simon would rec say that companies now and, and even our government are playing, uh, a finite game, right? A short-term game versus because there can be winners and losers. Exactly. And, and in a long-term game, isn't about, isn't about making them, you know, the money today, it, it, a long-term game it, is about what's good for the next generation and the next generation. And, and I think that we need to be playing an infinite game, especially when it comes to our families and our future. And, and I mean that for every race and every, you know, and, 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 you know, just before COVID, it was the big issue was, you know, the equal, equal pay for, for women. Now, I guarantee there's women that deserve greater pay than, than, <laughs> than their equivalent male counterpart, you know, that, but, but the potential in all of us is so much greater. Um, and I think helping people recognize their potential and have a vision for their future based on their potential rather than a vision for their future based on their current circumstances their 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 current results and that's what so many people base their vision on right you know you think about new year's resolutions and it's a little bit more and a little bit better a little bit more a little bit better and and we're content with a little bit more a little bit better you know well this year i made fifteen dollars an hour man next year if i make sixteen dollars an hour that's 40 bucks a week wow that's or they're a little bit more a little bit better or they're non-committal like uh uh, this year, my New Year's resolution is to try to work out more. Right. Well, no specific vision, right? So, so the the value of having a specific goal of, you know, I want to lose twenty pounds, is that I can track that and I can I can know when I've nailed that. And I think the same thing has to happen with with financial goals. Um, you know, I want to double my income one year to the next. And of course, anyone that's listening to this. The idea of doubling your income one year to the next doesn't fit into that little more, little better, right? Because that's what we're taught is a little more, a little better is good enough. But no, how could you double your income, right? And 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 believing that you could double your income puts a number on there. And then, and I think it can happen in a job, in a career, and as an employee, those things can happen. And 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 yet nobody tries because they're just stuck in the system of. You know, well, when I get a raise, a little more, a little better. <laughs> well, the the thing to thing to keep in mind there is that when you're in a in a specific job, that job pays a specific v amount based on the value that it brings to the company. And if you want, if you if you're afraid of entrepreneurship, but you want to make more money, you have to figure out how to bring more value. Right, because companies aren't going to just randomly pay you more because hey, we like you. Right, they'll they'll pay you a cost of living upgrade because I believe it's required. But that's about it. 
right? There, you're not going to go from making $60,000 a year to $120,000 a year without bringing more value to the table. And you can do that by either raising your own skill set, like, like we were talking about computer programmers earlier. You know, I, I more than doubled my income during my software engineering career by learning more and having more experience. And, but I was always in the same job. I was, an, I was an engineer or a senior engineer or whatever, but I was still doing the same thing, right? Or if, you can, if you're not going to do the same thing and just get better at it, you can move up the chain of command into things like management or, or uh, project management or um, asset and resource management. Or, you know, you have to make yourself more valuable to get more money. Absolutely. Either one of those. You can double your income, but sitting where you are, not working on improving yourself and doing the same job, you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. Absolutely. Well, and, and that's having a vision, right? For, you know, even if that vision is, you know, I'm going to be the CEO, right? Yep. So, so today you're sweeping floors. What, what does it take to, to become the CEO? You can't just continue to sweep floors and expect that, that someday they'll promote you to CEO. You've got to learn the inner workings of the business and, and like you said, make yourself more valuable to the company. And that's what moves you up and, and adds value to the company. And I think the same thing can be said for entrepreneurs. Really, it's how are you going to make yourself a more valuable entrepreneur for yourself, right? And I think it's it, the big transition happens when most entrepreneurs start out and they basically create a job for themselves and, yeah, and like, they, come, they become employees, self-employed. They're employees of themselves. And uh, like Robert Kiyosaki would say, they have a terrible boss. And uh, the, the truth is when you start to recognize that you don't have to be an employee for yourself, you have options to, to do, to focus on something you can add value to the world you can outsource a bunch of the things that make your company run and, and you can focus on the things that where you add the most value um, to others and add the most value to the world and, and you get paid better for it. And you're actually helping employ either employing people or outsourcing and helping other entrepreneurs. Um, and so it's, it's a pretty exciting thing to, to see visions start to come to reality because they don't just impact a single entrepreneur. They impact that entrepreneur and the trail of people that he's using fellow entrepreneurs and, and companies, like you said, a rising tide lifts up all the ships unless your ship has a hole in it. And then it stays on the bottom. <laughs> that should be one of our shows. <laughs> the ship with a hole in the bottom or the rising tide. Oh, the holes in the ship. What yeah, absolutely. Trying to keep you from rising. <laughs> Well, or the weights in the bottom, right? <laughs> Too much ballast. We are coming up at 58 minutes. Um, we haven't had anybody talking in the chat today, so um, and there's nobody to ask qu questions of. Uh, if you've stayed this long and, and are watching this replay, be, feel free to leave a comment, and Simon and I will be checking in the group and definitely make comments or answering questions. Um, or you know, feel free to reach out to either one of us. We're both available through this uh, group. You can reach us on our uh, Facebook direct message. Yeah, and, and I hope uh, something that you want to share. If you found value that you'll share it with your friends, invite uh, your friends to join the group. And uh, you know, we're, we're trying to grow the group and, and, and provide a service to entrepreneurs and help entrepreneurs um, grow themselves and, and grow those that are close to them. To, to be more effective business leaders and, and obviously to, uh, in my mind, is to help them live the life of their dreams. And, and, yeah, and of course, I want them to dream much bigger than a little more, a little better. We can't be satisfied with a little more, a little better. Nope. So with that, um, this Simon saying, go live your best life. Yeah, thanks for checking us out. And I'm just going to encourage you to keep adding value because that's the best way to, to leave an impact in the world.